Bool stayed in a boarding house run by Mrs. Knowles at Strawberry Hill in Sunday's Well, County Cork. Later on, he moved to five Greenville Place. He shared the lodging with Raymond de Veracour, professor of modern languages at Queen's College. De Veracour was an old friend of Bool from his Lincoln days. Bool soon settled into academic life, enjoying a degree of financial independence. On the 30th of May, 1851, Bool was elected Dean of the Science Division of the Faculty of Arts. The University of Dublin was the first university to formally recognise his academic strengths when it awarded him with an honorary LLD that year. His second book, An Investigation of the Laws of Thought, was published in 1854. The first time Bool met his future wife, Mary Everest, was in Cork in 1850. She was only 18 years old at the time, while Bool was 35 years old. Nine months and one week after their marriage, they had their first child, Mary Ellen. Mary Bool gave birth to their couple's second daughter on the 3rd of September 1858, named Margaret Bool, and Mary went on to have three more children, Alicia, Lucy, and Ethel Lily. At this time, he felt a need to produce a textbook on differential equations. His third book, A Treatise of Differential Equations, was published in 1859. Difference equations began to take over Boole's mind and he set to work on his fourth book and final book, a textbook called A Treatise of the Calculus of Finite Difference. The purpose of his new work was to shine a light on connections between difference equations and differential equations. Through the publication of this book, it could be said that George Boole had anticipated developments during the 20th century, as computers and calculating machines are based on the discrete difference equation rather than on the continuous differential equation. Boole died in 1864 at the age of 49. On the 20th of November, he had walked three miles from his home to the university in pouring rain. He conducted a lecture he didn't want to miss in soaking wet clothes and developed a horrible cold. His weak constitution offered little resistance and his lungs rapidly became infected. His wife Mary had a very unorthodox way of curing his fever. By putting her husband to bed and drenching him in water, she may have unwittingly hastened his early death. 